Last week, the African mentioned that he wants to see breakdown on my track Vertical Love. So we're gonna slow it down a little bit. We're gonna chill it out a little bit and we're gonna go over how I made this track in Ableton. I'm gonna get into it. I loaded up the session for Vertical Love. I just looked at it real quick before I went live to just see how I'm gonna break it down. First, I'm gonna solo the drums so you guys can hear it. This is just the kick and snare. How I did this drum pattern, I used to use this VST called Geist. It's a pretty dope like drum programming VST. It's kind of like uh, FL's step sequencer. I don't have Geist installed anymore, so I just printed the drums to audio. Let me play it with the hi-hat too. One thing I like about Geist is when it comes to hi-hats and programming different percussion stuff, it lets you do FL type stuff. I can easily just pitch my hi-hats up and down, reverse it, mess with the timing of each individual note. If I didn't use FL, I'd probably still be using Geist. And when I made this beat in 2017, I wasn't using FL. I didn't even have it installed. I printed the drums to audio tracks and then So I use pretty much the same chord for the whole track. For that particular track, I use the synth form in complete control. I think this was part of like complete 11. I use the brass plugin in there. That's these horns. Then on this track, this is Keyscape. And I just got a Rhodes sound. Rhodes classic. Then if we go a little later into it, I don't know why I have that playing twice. Maybe I just wanted to make it louder. Who knows? I'll make those a mistake. I think on this one, I used the Dave Smith Tetra to play out the chords. And I think I just recorded it into the computer. Let's hear that whole section together with the drums. Okay, this is just a clap loop. This is from Drums and Knock Volume 4. So let's hear that with the track. What I like about this track, there's a lot of like little percussion elements going on. This was from the Dave Smith Tetra. And what I did with this is I took those chords that I used for the main part and I threw an arpeggiator on it and then just recorded the output of the Tetra onto the track. This is what it sounds like. And then the next track. I think it's just an octave down in the next track. Same thing, Dave Smith Tetra, that arpeggio sound. What I love about that sound is when you hear that, you can tell that's not a soft synth. It's an analog synth. So the Dave Smith Tetra, it has a real strong analog character. And I feel like that is something the live percussion I added with the hard hitting drums and, you know, even some of the, the VSTs. I feel like the Tetra adds this width and dimension to the track. And then... Again, I think this was also Tetra. So all together, let's hear that whole section. A lot of you guys ask about arrangement, and for this one, I started with one arpeggio. As you move on in time, there's another arpeggio. Then I keep building on that. And then by the end, there's that, you know, darker arpeggio. It's like the, the climax before it goes into the pre-hook.
Uh, next thing I'm gonna get into is these percussion sounds. My bad, this session's super disorganized. You know, when you're just in that creative flow, like sometimes you don't give a shit about being super organized. I'm usually pretty good about that, but sometimes you're just in the flow, just throwing shit in there. I believe this is some percussion I got from Africa. So I recorded that in, put it hard left, and then hard right, I have this sound. Now let's hear it together. This is a cheat code, guys. Hard panning two different sounds, like uh, raw recorded sounds together. It sounds dope. Check it out with the track. Exactly. Lettuce said nice natural sounds. Like I, I wanted this track to sound super organic. So I feel like the technique of having one sound pan hard right and one sound hard left, not multiple sounds, but just one sound. It just kind of like expanded the track in a really calm, organic, clear, crispy way. There's not a ton of stuff going on. You can see here I played a bunch of other stuff, but it didn't make it to the track. Let's hear what I didn't add to the track. It's dope. I mean, that's hard, but for something else. See, now now that I'm hearing this, that's a perfect loop for me to use for something else. So I'm gonna just be real about my workflow. I like that, so I'm just gonna save that. All right, if you're working on something or if you go back and hear something that you like that you didn't use, you can always use it later. This sound, this piece of metal with like ridges on it, there's two pieces of metal and if you rub some kind of mallet over it, it has this like sound, this like vibrational sound. Let's hear this whole section together with the percussion, with the melody, with the drums. Okay, the one, the one thing we're missing in this session is the 808. Okay, so let's hear it with everything together. So this is the whole verse section right here. For the 808, I used an 808 from Drums and Knock Volume 4. What I did was I loaded it into a simpler and I set the glide time to 175. And so what that does for anyone who might not know, probably a lot of you guys know, but what the glide time does is when you hit a note and then you hit another note, it's gonna take 175 milliseconds to get to the next note. So if I hit a low note and then a high note, it's gonna glide upwards. If I hit a high note, then a low note, it's gonna glide downwards. So I'm gonna solo the bass and play it. You can see what I did. So how I got that glide is just, I literally started on my keyboard on a high note and just glided down. And then I made them overlap. I played that on the keys and just glided the notes by overlapping them. So let's hear this one again. So anytime you're seeing notes like a cluster like that, it's doing that glide. So let's hear this one. <laughs> I must have automated the reverb on at that time. Yeah, the reverb's on at this point in the track. <laughs> in the beginning, there's no reverb on the bass because I was going for that super dry sound, so let's hear it. The bass is very upfront, very clean sounding. And then once it gets to halfway through, watch the reverb come on. As the track gets more busy, the bass is filling up more space with the reverb. I really wish you guys could hear that in stereo right now. Damn, it's all good though. What I did here was I just took a white noise riser I made in Drums and Knock Volume 4. I don't have the processing on this track because I had made that in another session. I made it a part of Drums and Knock 4, but I was able to just bring it in from the pack. That's one of the great things about the packs is you can just go into effect sound and just drag it into your session. It will fit in the tempo. I'm not doing sound design in every session. Sometimes I'll do full sessions with all sound design. I literally just dragged this in and it was the right tempo, 120 beats per minute. But even if it was the wrong tempo, it would just snap to the tempo. <laughs> So just for dramatic effect, it's leading up, leading up, leading up, building tension, then drops. So it's like it's leaving you on the cliff. And so once you're on the cliff, cut. You're like, oh shit, shit, shit. I'm just hanging on the cliff. And then this sound comes in. 
A little bit of singing. That's me singing. Drop. Drop! And now you're flying. You jumped off the cliff and now you're, you're gliding through space and time. You know, you're building tension, building tension, building tension. Drop. Hanging, hanging, hanging on the cliff and then you drop. And you're flying through space. Let's get into this vocal track. This is just me singing, just on this mic or whatever. Man, thank God for auto-tune, thank God for compressors, <laughs> thank God for all that, because I would not have a singing career if it wasn't for those gems. Let's get a knock right now for all the plug-in developers. Ah! I just put an EQ, cut the lows, little bump at 587, and a high bump at 12.5. Glue compressor just hitting it pretty lightly, I don't even know why it's that light, but... Overdrive, reverb. See, that did it. It's the reverb that made it glue together. It doesn't have to be a great vocal performance. Like, you can just sing and just capture a vibe and it'll work. Then another EQ, cut everything below 79 and boosted at about 10 kilohertz. Oh, I see what I did. I automated the pan. So it just captured a little vibe. In this part, I brought this percussion back to center. In the intro part, I had the two percussion sounds panned hard left and hard right. This part, it was just too much, so I only kept the one sound and centered it. Again, I use a different bass sound in the hook part because earlier, it was more of like a bass lead. It wasn't really like an 808, like... It didn't act as a bass compared to this. This is from the Tetra, by the way. So then all together. So if we go to the second verse. <laughs> this is cool. So this is a little variation I added just in the second verse. So that's a trick. If you have a track with like multiple verses, but you want to differentiate them, you can add like a little ear candy, like just in the second verse or take something away in the first verse. So it only comes once in the track. So I took that approach with this. Again, this is from the Dave Smith Tetra analog synth. We have two tracks. <laughs> that's cool. What I did was I literally copied the MIDI from that sound earlier. It wasn't the 808, but like the synthy 808. And I brought it here. So this is the other one. <laughs> That's dope. Let's hear these two together. <laughs> all together. Vertical love. Decap. <laughs> 